Hello everyone. Uh, we shall start our course of lectures. And the first lecture we will devote it to the mathematical preliminary of the course. Moment. Lecture number one, yeah. In this part of the preliminary lectures, we give an account of some basic notion which will be uh, used throughout our course formal languages, uh, automata and codes. A set is a collection of elements without any structure other than membership. Uh, to indicate that X in an element of the set as we write in the following way, yeah? The statement that X is not an, in an element of S, we shall write in the following way. So we have to we call in the first case that X belongs to S, and in the second case, we say that X um, is not belong to S. A set uh, can be specified by an enclosing sum description of its element or curly branches. For example, the set of integer 0, 1, 2 is shown as S is equal 0, 1, 2. And ellipses I use whenever the meaning is clear that uh, that the a b so on uh, z stands for the lowercase letter in english alphabet and while a uh, two uh, four six and so on denotes the set of all positive even integers when the, uh, the need arises we use a more explicit intention in, in which we write s uh, is equal uh, i, uh, such i is greater than zero and i is even. For the last example, we read this as s is a set of all i's such that i is greater than zero and i is even, implying, of course, that i is an integer. Uh, the usual set uh, operation is union, is denoted by this symbol, intersection by this symbol, and a difference by symbol minus or symbol uh, without, yeah, or set minus. Defined in the following way, the union of S1 and S2 consists of such element X that X belongs to S1, or x belong s2. The intersection uh, s1 um, and x s2 uh, it, it consists of such element x that x belongs to s1 and x belongs to s2. The difference s1 and s2 consists of such element s such that s uh, x belong uh, to S1 and X is not element of S2. Another basic operation is complementation. The complement of a set S uh, denoted by uh, our line says consists of all elements which are not in S. To make this meaningful, we need uh, to know uh, what the universal set u of all possible element is. If u is specified, then um, the complement of s consists as element x from u such that element are not element of s. The set with no element called the empty set or the, uh, the null set, and uh, it will be denoted by that uh, symbol. From the definition of the set, it is always the following um, equality holds that the union of any element, uh, any sets S with the empty sets is equal S, and the um, difference S with empty sets is equal S. The intersection of any set X with the empty set is empty set. The 
complement of the empty set is uh, the universal set. Um, if you consider uh, uh, two ties uh, times um, of complement of S, we get S equal S. Uh, complement of complement of S is equal S. It's following useful identity known as De Morgan loves. Um, so the complement of union is uh, the intersection of complements and the complement of intersection is equal uh, the union of complements are needed on, on several occasions. A set S1 is said to be a subset of S if every element of S1 is also an element of the set S. And we write this in the following way. S1 is a subset of the set S. If uh, S1 is a subset of S, but S contain an element in, not in S1, we say that S1 is a proper subset of S. And we um, write this in the following way. S1 is a proper subset of S. If the set S1 and S2 have no common element, uh, that is uh, the intersection is uh, S1 and S2 is an empty set, uh, then the set S1 and S2 are said to be disjoint. A set is said to be finite if it is contain a finite number of elements. Otherwise, is it is infinite. The size of a finite set is a number of element in it. And this is denoted by such symbol. Also, uh, in many cases, we shall say that the cardinality of S. The, A given set normally has many subsets. The set of all subsets of a set S is called the power set of S and is denoted by a two in power S. And we observe that the two in power S or the set of subsets of S is a set of sets. Example, if uh, the set S consists of A, B, and C, then uh, its power set is empty set A, B, C as a subset of S, uh, the subset A, B, A, C, B, C, and um, the set S. Here, the cardinality of the si or the side of S is equal to S, and the cardinality of the power set of S is equal to 8. Uh, this is an instance of a general result. If S is a, a finite, then the cardinality of uh, the power set of S uh, is equal to the um, uh, two in power of the cardinality of S. In many of our examples, the elements of a set are ordered sequences of elements from other sets. Such sets are said to be the Cartesian product of other sets. For the Cartesian product of two sets, which, uh, which itself is a set uh, of ordered parts, we write S is equal to the Cartesian product of S1 and S2, and this consists of the other parts x, y, so that x belongs to s1 and y belongs to s2. Example, let s1 consist of 2 and 4, s2 consists of 2, 3, 5, 6, uh, then the Cartesian product s1 and s2 consists of the following element, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 5, uh, 2, 6, uh, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, uh, 5, 4, 6. Uh, we know that the order in which um, the elements of a bar are written matters. The bar, uh, the order bar 4, 2 in the, uh, is an element uh, of the Cartesian um, S1 and S2, but um, the ordered bar 
to uh, four is not. This notation is extended in an obvious fashion to the Cartesian product of more than two sets. Generally, the Cartesian products of the set S1, S2, S1, S, and Sn consist of uh, ordered um, sequences X1, X2, X, so on, Xn, so that every Xi belongs to S, Si capital, yeah. A set can be divided by separating into a number of subsets. Suppose that uh, S, uh, S capital 1, S capital 2, S1, S capital N are subset uh, of a given set S capital L, that's the following calls. The subset S1 capital, S capital 2, S1, S capital N are mutually disjoint. And uh, the union of uh, S uh, capital one, uh, S capital two, so on, and S capital N is equal S capital. Every of S capital I is non-empty. Then S1, S capital one, S capital two, so on, S N is called a partition of uh, the set S. A function is a rule that defines two elements, one set a unique element of another third. If S denotes a function, then the first set is called the domain of F, and the second set is uh, its range. We write uh, uh, F from S1 to S2 uh, to indicate that the domain of S is a subset of uh, S capital one, and that the range of F is a subset of uh, um, uh, S capital two. If the domain of F is all um, elements of the set S capital one, we say that F is a total function on S uh, capital one. Otherwise, F is said to, uh, to be a partial function. In many applications, the domain and range of function in what is R in the a set of positive integer. Furthermore, we are often interested only in the behavior of this function as a argument become very large. In such cases, an understanding of the growth rate may be surface uh, and a common order of the magnitude notation can be used. Let f of n and g of n be function whose domain is subset of the positive integer. If the, uh, there exists a positive constant C such that for all um, sufficiently large n, um, we have that uh, Fn is uh, less or equal uh, C multiplied uh, to a model uh, by model G of n, uh, we say that F has order at most G. We write this in the following F of n is equal um, O capital of Gn. If um, uh, the model of n is greater or equal uh, C multiply of the model uh, G of n, uh, then uh, F has order as at least uh, G for which we use the following notation, uh, F of N is equal um, capital uh, omega capital of G of N. Finally, if there exists a constant C1 and C2 such that um, C1 multiply uh, of model uh, um, G1 is equal or uh, is uh, least or equal uh, of model Fn is um, uh, least of or equal C, uh, C2 of a model Gn. Uh, uh, F and G have the same order of, of magnitude. Express it as in the following way. Uh, uh, F of N is equal um, uh, theta capital of G of N.
In this order of magnetization, we ignore multiple uh, conceive constant and lower order terms that become uh, magnetizable uh, as an increasable. Example that fn is equal to multiply n square plus uh, 3n, uh, gn is equal to n power 3. Uh, h of n is equal to uh, 10 multiply n square plus um, uh, 100. Then we have that n, f n is equal to um, capital of g f n. g n uh, is equal uh, omega capital of h of n. And f n is equal uh, uh, to capital of h of n. In order of magnetization, the symbol equal should not be interpreted in the equality and order of magnitude expression cannot be um, treated like ordinary expression. Uh, manipulation such as O capital N plus O capital N is equal to multiply O capital of N are not sensible and can be lead to incorrect conclusion. Still, if used properly, the order of magnitude argument can be effective as uh, we shall see in the lay, uh, later lectures. Some function can be represented by the set of parts. Uh, in the following way. So x1, y1, and x1, y2, and so on, where uh, x, uh, i is an element of the domain of the function, and uh, y, i is a corresponding value in its range. For such a set to define a function, each x, y can occur at most uh, once as a first element of the of a pair. In this uh, is not uh, satisfy the, uh, the set is called a relation. Relation are more general uh, than function. Um, in a, a, a function, each element of the domain has exactly one associated element in the uh, range. A relation, uh, uh, there are, may be several such element in the range. Uh, one kind of, the, um, of relation is that of equivalence, a generalization uh, um, of the concept of equality or identity. To indicate that uh, par x, y is in the equivalence relation, we write um, x uh, is equivalent to y, uh, a relation denoted um, by um, equivalent is considered and equivalence if it satisfies uh, the following three rules. The reflexive rule, um, x equivalent x for all x. The symmetry rule, if x equivalent y, then y equivalent x. The transitive rule, if x equivalent to y and y is equivalent z, then z, uh, x is equivalent z. Example. On the set of non negative integer, we can define a relation x equivalent y if and only if fx is uh, equal y by model 3 by model 3. Yeah. So then we have that um, 2 is equivalent phi. Uh, to, um, 12 is equivalent to 0 and 0 is equivalent to 36. Clearly, this is an equivalence relation as it satisfies uh, reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. If S capital is a set on which we have a definite equivalence relation, then we can use this equivalence to partition as a set into equivalent classes. Each equivalence class contains all and only equivalent elements. So next we shall uh, speak about the graph. A graph is uh, a construct consisting of two finite sets, the sets, uh, 
uh, we capital, uh, uh, we one, we two, and so we end up vertices. And the set E capital, which consists of E1, E2, so and so on, EM of edges. Each edge is a pair of vertices from uh, a V capital, for instance. Yeah. We have that uh, every EI is equal an order part a bar of um, the v, um, j v k yeah, where v, j v k are vertices of the uh, of uh, the considered graph and so and uh, this uh, e i is an edge from uh, v j to v k we say that edge uh, e I is an outgoing edge for VJ and uh, an incoming edge for VK. Such a construct is actually a directed graph or a D graph. Since um, we associate a direction from VJ to VK with each edge. Graph may be labeled, a label uh, being a name or other information associated with this par, uh, part of the graph. Both uh, vertices and edges may be uh, labeled. Graphs are uh, conveniently visualized by diagrams in which the vertices are represents as a circle and the edges as line with arrows connecting uh, the vertices. The graph with vertices v1, v2, v3, and edges v1, v3, v3, v2, v3, v1, v3, v3 is uh, depicted in the following picture. A sequence of edges vi, vg, vg, vk, uh, and so on, vm, vn is said to be a walk uh, from v uh, from uh, edge um, from uh, what says uh, vi to what says vn. The land of a walk is a total number of edges tra um, transferred in going from the initial vertex to the final uh, one. A walk in which no edges is uh, repeated is said to be a pass. A pass is simple if no vertex is repeated. A walk from um, vertices uh, vi to uh, itself with no repeated edges is called a cycle with base vi. If no vertices are there, then base are repeated in a cycle, then it's said to be simple. In the figure, um, we are uh, v one v three and v three v two is a simple path from v one to v two. V one v three v three v two yeah is a simple path from v one to v two. The sequence of edges v one v three v three v three. V3, V1 is a cycle, but uh, not a simple one. If the wedge of the F graph are labeled, we can talk about the label of a walk. This label is the sequence of edge labels in a counter where the path is um, traversed. Finally, in an edge from uh, vertex uh, to itself is called a uh, loop. In our figure, mm, uh, there is a loop on vert vertex V3, yeah? On several occasions, we will uh, refer to an algorithm to finding all simple paths between two given vertices or all simple uh, cycles based on a vertex. 
if we do not uh, concern ourselves with efficiency, uh, we can use the following obvious method. Starting from the given vertex, say, uh, V i, I, a list of all outgoing edges, V i, V k, V i, V l, uh, and so on. Uh, at this point, we have all paths of length one starting and uh, V i. For all vertices, V k, V l, and so on, so reach it. And we list all uh, outgoing edges as long as they do not lead to any vertex already used in the paths we are constructing. After we do this, we uh, shall have all simple paths of land to uh, um, uh, originating at, uh, we, uh, at the vertex and the vertex VI. We continue this until the all possibilities are, are counted for. Since uh, um, there are only a fi uh, finite number of vertices, we will we shall eventually a list of uh, all simple paths beginning uh, at uh, the vertices VI. From this, we select those ending as the um, desired vertex. True. A particular type of graphs. A tree is a directed graph that has no uh, cyclists and that has one distinct vertex called the uh, root, such uh, that uh, uh, there is exactly one path from the root to every other vertex. This definition implies that the root has no incoming edges uh, and that there are some vertices without outgoing edges. Uh, there are, um, these call, uh, are called uh, the leaf of uh, the tree. If there is a, an edge from um, VI to VJ, then uh, VI is called the parent of Vj and Vj is called the child of Vi. The level associated with each vertex is a number of edges in the path from uh, the root to the vertex. The height of, of the tree is the largest le uh, level a number of any vertex. This term is illustrated in the following figure. So root here, yeah. so this leaf, 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 leaf. So zero level here, yeah. set level, so, and head is three, yeah. Head of this uh, tree is equal three. At time, if you want to associate uh, an ordering with the uh, nodes at each level. Uh, in uh, such case, we talk about ordered tree. An uh, important uh, requirement for reading these text is the uh, ability of, uh, to form proofs. In the mathematical argument, we imply um, the accepted rules of uh, deductive reasoning, and many proofs are simply a sequence of such steps. Two special proof techniques are used for uh, frequently uh, that in uh, appropriate to review them briefly. Uh, um, these are proof by induction and proof by uh, contradiction. Induction is a technique um, by which uh, the truth of number of statements can be inferred from the truth of the few specific instances. Suppose we have a sequence of statements P capital one, P capital two, and so we want to prove uh, to be true. Furthermore, suppose also that the following holds. For some uh, k um, greater or equal to one, we know that p capital one, p capital two, and so on, p capital k are true. 
the problem is such that for any n uh, great or equal k, the truth of p1, p2, so on, pn implies the truth of p capital um, n plus one. We can uh, then use induction to show that every statement in this sequence is true. In the, uh, a proof by induction, uh, uh, we uh, ag agree uh, as follows. From a condition one, we know that the first car case statement are true. Then condition two tell us that P capital um, uh, K plus one also must be true. But uh, now um, that we know that the first K plus one statement are true, we can apply condition uh, two again to claim that uh, P capital uh, K plus two must be true and so on. We need not explicitly continue this argument because the uh, pattern is clear. The, the chain of reasoning can be extended to any statement. Therefore, every statement is true. The starting statements, uh, P capital one, P capital two, so on, P capital K are called the basic of the induction. The step uh, connected P n with um, P capital N plus one is called the in inductive step. Uh, the inductive step is generally made uh, either by the inductive assumption that P capital one, P capital two, and so on, P capital N are true. And then uh, agree uh, that the truth of these statements guarantees the truth of uh, the statement uh, P capital N plus one. In a formal inductive argument, we show all three parts explicitly. Example. A binary tree is a tree in which no parent can be have more than two children. Prove that a binary tree of length h one has at most uh, two in power and leaves. If we denote the maximum number of leaves of the binary tree of the h one by l of n, then we want to show that L of n is uh, less or equal uh, to in power n. Basic, query L of zero is equal, one is equal to in power zero, because a tree of h to zero can have no notice as a root. That is, um, it has at most one leaf. Inductive assumption. L of i is less or equal to uh, two in power i for i uh, zero, one, and so on, and inductive step. To get a binary tree of the height n plus one from the height uh, n, we can uh, create at most two leaves in place of each previous one. Therefore, L of n plus one is equal to multiply L of n. Now using the inductive assumption, we get that L of n plus one is less or equal to multiply uh, to power n, which is equal to in power n plus one. Thus, if our climb is true for uh, n, it must also be true for n plus one. Uh, since n can be any number, the statement must be true for all n. Here uh, we introduce the symbol uh, black square that uh, uh, is used in our course of lecture to denote the end of a proof. And inductive reasoning can be difficult to grasp. Uh, it um, helps to notice uh, the close connection between induction and uh, recursion in programming. For example, the recursion definition of a function f of n, where n is um, any positive integer, often has two powers. Uh, one involves the definition of 
f of n are uh, plus one in terms of uh, f of n, f of n minus one, so on, f of uh, one. This corresponds uh, to the um, inductive step. The second part is uh, es uh, escape from the recursion, which is accomplished uh, by defining f of n, f of two, so on, f of k, and on uh, recursively. This corresponds uh, to the basis of induction. As in uh, induction, a question allows us to uh, draw conclusion about all instances of the problem, uh, given only a few starting values and uh, using the uh, recursive uh, nature of the problem. Uh, sometimes a problem looks difficult until the look uh, at in uh, just the uh, right way. Often looking in, uh, at its uh, recursively simplified patterns uh, gravity. Example, a set uh, uh, L1, L2, and so on, Ln of multiple inter intersecting stretch lines divides the plane into a number of separated regions. A single line divides the plane into uh, parts. Uh, two lines uh, generate four uh, regions, a uh, three line makes uh, seven regions, and so on. This uh, is easily checking, easily uh, throw up uh, two, three lines, but as the number of lines increases, it becomes uh, difficult to spot a uh, pattern. Let us try to solve this problem recursively. Look at figure. Uh, to see what uh, happens if we add a new line L of n plus uh, one to existing n lines. Region um, to the left of L1 is divided into two new regions. So is a, a region to left of L2 and so on until we get to the last line. And the last line, the region of the uh, right of the LN is also divided. Each of N intersection then um, generate uh, one new region with uh, one extra at the end. So if we let a capital of N denotes the number of regions generated by N lines. We see that the A or a capital of N plus one is equal N A of a capital of N plus N plus one for any positive integer N with A capital of one is equal to uh, from this uh, simple recursion, we then uh, calculate f uh, a uh, capital of two is equal to four, a capital of three is equal uh, seven, and uh, a capital of four is equal to eleven, and so on. To get a formula for uh, a capital of n and to show that is uh, correct, we use induction. If uh, we conjecture uh, that a uh, capital of n is equal to uh, the fraction of n multiply n plus 1 divided 2 plus 1, then um, we have the following that n of n plus 1 is equal uh, the following fraction n plus 1 uh, multiply n plus 2 divided 2, uh, 2 plus 1. Uh, justify in inductive step. The basic is easily checking and completing in the argument. In this example, we have been a little less formal in, uh, in defining the basic inductive assumption and inductive step, but they are these uh, and are essential. To keep our uh, subsequent discussion from becoming too formal, we shall generally prefer uh, the style of this second example. However, if uh, you have a difficulty in the following of the constructing a proof, to back to the more explicit form of example uh, 1.5. 
proof of, uh, by contradiction is another powerful technique that often work when uh, everything also falls. Suppose we want to prove that some statement P capital is true. We then assume for, uh, for the moment that a statement P capital is false and see uh, while that assumption leads us. If we arise at the conclusion that we know is uh, incorrect, we can lay the blame on the starting assumption and conclude that the statement P capital must be true. The following is a classic and elegant uh, example. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integer n and m, so uh, that m and m have no a common factor. A real number is uh, not rational and said is irrational. Shows that the square of two is irrational. As in all proofs by contradiction, we assume the two contrary of uh, what we want to show. Here we assume that uh, square of two is a rational uh, number, so that is can be written as a um, uh, fraction of, uh, n divide m, where n and m are integer without a common factor. Regarding this formula, we have that um, uh, to multiply m square is equal n square, yeah? And therefore, n square must be even. Uh, this implies that n is even, so that we can write n is equal uh, to multiply k or uh, 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 two multiply m square is equal four multiply k square, and uh, m square is equal two multiply k square. Therefore, uh, the integer m is even. But this contradicts our assumption that as in as integers n and m have no common factors. Thus, m and n in the uh, formula five cannot exist, and uh, uh, square root of uh, two is not a rational number. This example exhibits to a sense of the proof by contradiction. By making a certain assumption, we are led to, the, uh, to a contradiction of assumption or some uh, known fact. All, uh, if all steps in our argument are logically sound, we must conclude that our initial assumption was false. So we finish our lecture. I wish you good luck. I wish you health to finish. Goodbye.